Hej. There's nothing I could do about that. It's fine. I don't mind. Let me switch over and we're gonna start the, the stream properly.
Cameras are coming in. Hey everybody, welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome everybody. Let me get Sparkle situated. Oh wait, I don't have space there. One sec. Hello. Hello. Hello everybody. Hello, welcome, welcome everybody. Sparkles is here. He's ready to party. Hi Sparkles. <laughs> She says hi, Sparkles. Hi. Okay. All right. This is a the first portfolio stream in quite quite a while that we've had. For um, for context, how the stream works, there are some rules to join the portfolio review. Okay. A lot of you have you guys have already joined, but basically, you just need to join our Discord server and put your portfolio under the portfolio review channel. Subs and uh, boosters get priority and you have to follow the rules. No nipples, okay? Like that is <laughs> the main rule. Um, as you'll see in the corner here, oh, I just lost chat. As you can see in the corner, we have our special guest back again, uh, Elise Everett, also known as Spacey 3D. Right? Hey. hey! Who has been participating in our portfolio's room since last time? And it was actually really fun. So, do you want to tell the world about it yourself? Yeah, I work as a 3D modeler, used mostly hard surface for an outsourcing company. So, we get to work on various AAA games. My main client is Fortnite. And I've also done work for other games like Call of Duty, Smite, Warframe, some other things you've heard of. Just just a couple of things, just a couple of few things that somebody may or may not have heard of <laughs> if they are in games. So she knows what the heck she's talking about. Um, so we will be streaming for about two hours today. We're going to have a card cut off. Because normally these can last forever if we let them, right? And I don't know about you, but um, I have a big day tomorrow. <laughs> we got, I can't spend it all here. Um, so yeah, hello, everybody. So let me go over the portfolio review rules just one time so that um, we can all be on the same page. Okay, there's the rules. Okay. So... Portfolio reviews, how to participate. Um, basically, again, just join the Discord server. Post a link to your work. It can be a single work or, or a portfolio in the portfolio review channel. Okay. Um, do not make sure that you don't have any nudity in your portfolio. And if you do, just make sure it's marked for like mature or something on our station so I know not to click it. Not because we hate nudity, but because Twitch has very specific terms of service. Okay, and we don't want to get the channel banned. Um, in order to get a review, you need to be in line in the Discord and also present here. So you can't like put your work up on Discord and then leave. That's not how the portfolio critiques work. The reason being that um, basically there's I can't, I need context for your portfolio. I'm gonna I want to ask you questions, right, Spacey? She, she too. Um, and so like there's no there's no way to know what's going on with your portfolio and what your goals are without talking to you. Okay, so before every portfolio review, I'm going to say, "Hey, so and so, are you here?" And if they don't answer within like a minute or so to account for lag, then we will skip. Okay. All right, let's get into it. Oh, Kidoki. So how how do I do this? I don't know. Wait one second. How do I know which person is a booster versus a sub? I don't even know right now. So red is booster, and purple is sub. Okay. 
We don't have that many portfolios today. That's good. So far, it's only been a few minutes. So we're going to start with Orlando, Orlando Toscano. I don't know how to say that. Are you short? <laughs> Not Pedro Oliveira? Yes. Pedro Oliveira. Ol what is it? Oliveira. Are you here, Pedro? Orlando, please wait one second. I accidentally skipped somebody before you. What would I do without you? I don't know. I don't know what I would do. <laughs> you look at Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> So we're waiting for Pedro. Pedro. Going once. Okay, we should probably wait a little longer. So what have you been up to? Myself? Yeah. Uh, currently, watching cats. In general, wildlife photography. <gasps> That's pretty neat. I, I, I don't go outside anymore. <laughs> I saw a great blue heron kill a catfish today. <laughs> Those are some of the coolest birds. Yes. Yeah, I think so. They they walk around here. Well, I don't know if it's a great blue heron, but it's some sort of heron, you know, that walks around here and they they just cross in front of the cars and traffic. But they're huge. <laughs> okay, we're skipping Pedro and going straight to Holanda. As the prophecy foretold. So, let's get started. I'm going to start with the bear friend. I'm gonna... I like to see, like, the normal art station pages. I don't know about you. What, what do you like? Do you like the... the... <laughs> I, I agree, just because it's more common, and uh, in general, people don't like change. I don't like change. I don't know how to see the normal like, site, though, anymore. I just want to see so. what we're used to. Yeah. Okay, we'll just do this for now. Let me take off this drawing of a dinosaur from here screen. Okay. Alright, so I always start by reading the description. It's a weird habit that... I don't know if it's a weird habit, it's just a habit. So it starts with... Hi! Such a fun project to work on. Sculpted in ZBrush before doing the hard surface modeling in my on Maya. I love the concept, so I wanted to do my own take on 3D. Hope you like it. And then the original idea is from that person. So... Do you see this one? Yeah. Cute little paws. I wonder what was rendered on... Oh, cute. Good first impressions. Mm-hmm. Definitely cute. Very cute. Right off the bat, I think that the tiling and the scale on the cloth aspect of the outer sh armor looks really big to me and low resolution like I wonder if I can zoom in I was thinking a similar thing and also the the amount of texture on his face is just sort of this so uniform and contrasted it just doesn't feel like it's the same quality as the rest of it it's hard to describe I kind of think the face the quality of the texture of the face is better than the rest, and I would like to up upgrade the rest. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. So make sure that like the kind of like texel density is pretty even across the whole sparkles. <laughs> make sure it's even across the sparkles. He's eating trash. Give me. A <laughs> I have Sorry. kitten currently sparkles. underneath my monitor. Oh, <laughs> I'm so jealous. Literally, sparkles. Do not eat that. Sorry, guys. I'm critiquing the cat's behavior, too, while we're critiquing mood. I also think, um, for geometry, the helmet is pretty key here because you're seeing that curve really prominently, and it just doesn't have enough edge loops going around it, so it doesn't look entirely smooth. Um, I would like to add two things. I'm, how do I zoom? My god, this is hard. Okay, we're way zoomed in now. So, you see how the edge flow doesn't match up from the top layer of the helmet to the to the inner layer of the helmet, creating kind of like a zigzag effect where they meet up and, and cross? Personally, I always tell people, just match those two up. 
I don't know if you agree, but like just match up where the edges go. So I'm going to try to use Epic Pen, which is normally a nightmare. Absolutely. Yeah. So we just have this match up with this. Like that. Um, and that will help a lot. And also, it really feels like the normals are really smooth. Do you see this line right here? Of lights, right? It's almost like... Mm, it's almost like... How do, I, how do I put it? Like, it's it's been smoothed really hard, and there's no definition of this edge, almost at all. And instead, we get some, like, rogue light shining through it. It looks like it's happening because there's not enough geometry there to hold up the normal map big. Yeah. Let's move on from the little baby bear. As far as topology seems fine, except the face of the bear doesn't have wireframe, which immediately makes me wonder why. It's, what are you hiding? Why is it lower? He's got a separate bear. Oh. And he's pretty cute. Oh! <laughs> so cute. He looks so innocent. Next piece. Hi, I did this fan art wanting to improve my render and 2D to 3D workflow. I'm really happy with the final result. I hope you like it as well. The OG pieces from Talented and True to Castle. Love your work. So it's like a donut. Fighter donut. That's a fun idea. Oh, oops. Dojo. <laughs> also knows how to kick. <laughs> <laughs> It's a very endearing idea. And all of the textures are like camera oriented. See that? As it rotates. Okay. Um, what do you think about this one? What's your first impressions? It's cute. It's fun. I'm smiling. <laughs> It is. Um, I think that maybe the weak point are the particle effects, which are just like planes with textures on them. I yeah. definitely it feels repetitive. It's like the same exact texture all around, and we can kind of see it where it touches the ground and stuff like that. I think it could definitely maybe have been more complex. I feel like it's being let down by the shader just looking like it's made out of plastic when you know the original concept drawing had these really nice textures on it you could have tried to go for more of a stylized graphical approach with a more painted looking effects yeah the shaders really make or break a stylized piece don't they beetle so right off the bat i very much enjoyed the the green areas of the beetle Another attempt to improve 2D to 3D workflow. This was pretty difficult to adapt for the distortion of the perspective, but I like a lot of how it turned out. I hope you like it as well. This great concept, great concept is from Adam from Alabama. This one looks really good. I like it compared to the concept. It looks pretty similar. Let's see. Oh yeah. Okay. Looks nice. Could probably be more detailed and more grungy. Like if you look on the like outer casing of the, sh I don't know, uh, the outer trim of the shell, for example. See how it's got like these little tattered edges, for example, that that just require more more texture, more detailing, more break of that silhouette. You know, it's a little bit too simplified. But the babies are so cute. I almost feel like a little bit of subsurface scattering would have gone a long way with this piece. Especially in the little mushrooms and stuff. Um, what do you think? I'm gonna let Sparkles out because he's been wanting to get out. Uh, I think that the materials on this one work better than the other ones. Even though it's not really the same style as a concept, I think it does hold up on its own. All you right. Can't... You can sort of tell, though, that the little tiny beetles have sort of the same topology density compared to their overall size as the big guy. And so they're just like unusually high resolution compared to him, which typically would not be how you do things. 
Oh yeah, I I went scrolling down this. I didn't realize this was the baby beetles. Yeah. Yeah, they they, they look at them the out of edges right much. here. Yeah. Whenever I read apologizing, you should ask yourself if the edge is chain holding up the silhouettes in any way and changing the shape in any way, and if it's not, probably get rid of it. Is normally the answer. Um. This might be a good time for me to go on my usual portfolio review day rant about how people write the descriptions. <laughs> um, so let's get into it. It's traditional. It happens every day. So um, when you are writing a description or anything that you've put in writing during your portfolio or like job search, resume, cover letter, whatever, you want to come across as the expert, even if you don't necessarily feel like the expert inside of your heart. Anything that you write that de devalues you as a professional, like, I was trying to learn, I struggled with it, this was really hard. It took me six months, but I finally got back to it, you know what I mean? People write that stuff on their art station descriptions, and I'm like, it's not a good idea, in my opinion, to seem more amateurish than you are, right? Even if you get the job you want, they'll probably be like, hmm, we could probably get away with paying this guy less, because he's so new, and unexperienced. I don't know if you agree, Space. Yeah, always project confidence. Fake it till you make it kind of deal. Yeah. You don't want to give them any reason to believe that you don't entirely know what you're talking about or doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is the end of the rant. Hopefully we don't have to say that again today. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. think last time I said it like 40 times. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know the idea is that you know, you're seeing this render pretty much just with the entire large guy in the frame so if there's no renders of the tiny guys then there's just wasted polygons because all of these extra edge loops are not something that you can discern from this far back of something so small okay next one and we have to start picking up the pace i wonder if we should do like a hard limit on how long we spend on each person's portfolio Otherwise, we're going to be here forever and or skip 40 people. We, we Do you think ten, five minutes is good? Artworks in portfolio or something. Yeah. Okay. Let's say um, five minutes per person and I don't know, just whatever the we, we go on the flow in those five minutes. That sound good? We're never going to hold ourselves to it, but we can try. <laughs> <laughs> maybe this, maybe this seven really minutes for first. Okay, hurry up. This one's really good. I like this a lot. Like the whole vibe of this is really strong, mm -hmm. and, and the renders really give you a feeling. And it's better than the concept, which good job. <laughs> it tells a story. It's got high contrast. It's interesting. Oh yeah! Wow, I was not expecting the, this for this to be the concept art. You really, you really picked that concept up and made it a lot better. So. I love that. Yeah. This looks like Trevor Henderson's work. It looks really good. It works really well. However, I feel like I can't appreciate the 3D model itself. It's like hiding behind effects yeah. and colors and filters. It doesn't be my tell main us thing. how good you are technically, but it is good artistically. Mm -hmm. Which sometimes is fine. I'd say like a good portfolio has a balance of like technically solid work. <gasps> And kittens. <laughs> okay. Uh, hopefully that was helpful for you. Let's see who's next. I'm guessing Pedro's not here. So, Cameron Oaken Oakenson. Are you here? Cameron Oakson. So which kitten is that? I just see a little floofy tail. <laughs> this is Lucy. Oh! Accidentally opening up my own gumroad on accident here. Cameron! Going once. Going twice. Okay. Next. Chase. Oh no, they're fighting. They're fighting on the desk. <laughs> I wish they would give a portfolio review. Chase, are you ready for your portfolio review? 
Hi, I'm Chase. Nice. Hi, let's let's get into it, Chase. So, let's start with the newest work, which is normally the best. So, my three interpretation of Milika, I'm not going to try, Silly Kovic. Awesome, awesome concept design from this alien head. I already apologized it to about 14,000 tries. Textured in substance. Gulp that in see brush. Cute. Pro tip for everybody here, like put your put your name on your work or like your website or your username. Something. Got your UVs. I don't think these UVs are particularly well lined up. What what do you think? Yeah, I took note of that immediately. <laughs> these, these long horizontal ones are so clearly something that could have been laid out in a perfectly horizontal or vertical strip, and that would really help with the bake. Because every time you have pixels that are trying to wrap around this diagonal edge, that's where you get those really jaggedy edges along your UV seams. Yeah. Furthermore, it's just n not enough space. It looks like it was auto packed. So, like the little the little objects, like the little islands, are actually holding up the space. It should be the opposite. You fit the big islands in first, and then the little ones go around that. You know, because you can actually crowd them in a little bit. Um, it's like filling a jar with rocks and sand. If you put the sand in first, the big rocks won't fit. But if you put the rocks in first, the sand will just trickle in between the rocks. Okay. Uh, Rich Apology? It's fine. fine. I don't have anything to complain about. Maybe the eye is a little high poly, especially right in the center. I think the tube on the back could have used some more edge loops mm -hmm. to get that curve curvy. Yeah. I don't know. It's like, there are a lot of places to save on poly counts. Curves are not one of them. Well, you still save, but not super hard. I feel like there are some edges right here. I don't know if you guys can see my mouse. That don't need to be here. These two, for example. They barely do anything, as far as I can tell. And there's quite a few like that, so... Take those off, and then instead... Um, do the... This, for the same amount of polygon. Demogorgon! Future sculpted slash retail... Frita pod, so real uh, pro tip for everybody. Grammarly, <laughs> grammarly, uh, watch out for your spelling, you know, because it's um, it's important. It's like a professional thing. It's the easiest thing to do on your portfolio is to spell everything right and have good grammar. Uh, created using various different concepts, 14k tries total to UV tiles with Udems. Pretty cool looking model. Let's say. I feel like I'm a little distracted by the way these have been stitched together. Like maybe if you had taken off the background or something and then like just put these two together with like a gray background, it would have been a little bit better. Yeah, I like the texturing in this one, especially up here at the top. Yeah, I think the actual model is looking pretty good, but the renders are definitely letting it down here. It's a lot to scroll through. I don't know if we need that much. Yeah, you definitely want to stick with just like five max, honestly, for most things, because people are not going to waste their time continually scrolling through everything. You just want to pick the very best ones. So hear me out. The fact that the single creature has two Udems is not unusual. However, the fact that this creature has two Udems, but the face looks really low resolution, to me is not ideal. So like, if we actually look at this face closely... You know, it just feels like the texture could have been a lot more high resolution, cleaner, and things like that. Yeah, if you're gonna split a texture in two like that, you should at least take that advantage of being able to upscale the resolution of the head because that is the most important part for people to look at. Yeah, look at how tiny the head is here. Right. Um, 
I don't know, I would have considered putting the head as big as possible on one Udem and then the rest on the other. And if you pack it properly, it, it probably would be okay. Uh, but all in all, it, the model looks really cool. Pretty legit, so I think what's letting you down are your UVs and then your renders. Oh, little dragon! Last project I just finished up, concepted it up myself using some inspiration from some awesome, awesome concept artists. 7,100 total polys. Wanted to go for a cute stylized creature that piggybacks with another character I made for previous class, which is featured here as well. It's pretty darling little dragon. I don't know, yeah. I like it. <laughs> And it lines up well with your concept. And it's gonna be really small in game, so to speak. I think the render could again use some work here, especially having this square gray floor plane being cut off in the background is just not looking professional. It it would be better if the entire scene was just clean and not distracting from the model. My subsurface scattering on the wings. Um, there's something a little weird on the back side of the dragon. I'm. It's like a seam, and like one side of the seam, there's like a scale, and the other one there isn't. Do you see that? I'll definitely clean that up in the future. Uh, there's also like color leaking. You see, like how the scale here in the belly, it, like its color is leaking onto the normal skin. That is looking really good. And there's the the minute counters. Hopefully that was helpful. But by the way, I know a lot. Oh my god, I know a lot of you guys are here, and like uh, each each portfolio review is only like five minutes or so. But there's a lot to be learned from each other's portfolio reviews. So even if we don't mention something on one person's portfolio, it might still be applicable to the other, right? So really listen and there's stuff you can extract from every bit of this, these reviews. Let's see who's next. So just checking to see if Cameron made it and Pedro. Chris says, I'm a little late. Chris, we have not gotten to yours yet. So. <laughs> I'm just checking the chat to see if the next is here. Nope. Okay. So next is Ehab Shalout. Shalout? Ehab? Is Ehab here? We have a reminder that... Oh, hi, you're here. Awesome. Yeah, just a little reminder that to get your portfolio critiqued, you need to be here and active. So let's go. Freelance 3D artist. Let's start with the latest and greatest. This is a concept robot that is constructed originally from my drawings. Chill out, robotics. <laughs> Okay, pretty simple stuff. What do you think of this one, Space? Yeah, the model looks clean. There's not a lot to comment on. Um, I guess the second render is a bit dark and isn't giving me a lot more than I could see in the first, so I might just brighten that up. Yeah, it looks clean. There's no weird pinches in the mesh anywhere, which is normally what I look for when I see this like kind of like hard surface yet not simple shape. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, there might be a little pinching around the camera. If only I could zoom in on these. <laughs> 
Then we have Audi R8. I didn't model a car, but I rendered it in Blender. Okie dokie. So, see, my instinct is that it's too bright and blown out in some areas. With those, like, big bright white lights. However, I do think when it comes to car things, <laughs> like, like, car, like, like, beauty shots, a lot of people do do this. And it's, like, a style. Have you seen that? I do agree. It's sort of an artistic thing that they do. And so I don't yeah. hate it here. Yeah. Uh, saved by the subject matter. <laughs> um, so it works. One thing, like, and this is like such a nitpick, but the car is just slightly too high off the ground. I don't know if you agree, but like, yeah. normally the wheel has some give underneath, and, and by a wheel I mean tire. Um, it has some give, right? So I've just literally put it underneath the ground just by like a few millimeters. What do you think about the second shot? I think the second shot is a better shot of the car itself, if only because it's cropped in more and I feel like I can really appreciate it. And But then the background doesn't feel really connected. It, it seems like there's just a bunch of back uh, buildings on a plane in the background and there's a space in between them and the floor that the car is on. Which doesn't make me feel like it's grounded in this world. Yeah, you know, part of why I think that is that like, if you actually look on the right side of the car, you can see the horizon that we don't see. Mm -hmm. And it's just a sunset. Like a warm yellow sunset. Um, and like, that might be part of it for me anyway. It's just like, okay, do we, are we just like facing off of like a cliff that has a sunset on it, you know? Um... Maybe a little fog would have helped hide the, the harshness of the buildings in the distance. And, like, fade them into the background a little bit more. Yeah. I feel like the the left side of the car is a little too close to the edge of the border for me. Like, I like a safe border and, like, rules of thirds and, and stuff like that. I personally think it might have missed the mark ever so slightly. But, all in all, pretty good exercise. This artwork is inspired by the choking Mr. Krabs meme. <laughs> you see this? It, it has good emotion. I like that. Expressive. <laughs> okay. I feel like there's quite a few things I can mention on this one. For one, like, every texture feels just perfectly tiled. You know, like, too tiled. The, the, the jeans, the belt, leather, the skin. It's just... Same thing tiled over and over and over and over again. Um, maybe I would like to see more more angles of this one. And then there are some areas, to talk about the texturing, there are some areas that have no texture at all, like the elbows and arms, the inside of the claw. And that just really stands out to me, in, in, because it's, everything else is so noisy, it just feels like it got smoothed. Yeah, I think it can work sometimes if it is done more deliberately, but because it's the only places that it's missing, it doesn't feel like it was done in a stylistic way. Um, yeah. Uh, Odon says, be careful when you get to the next portfolio, to a few of the later portfolios, there's at least one that contains nudity. I don't even know how to um, navigate that. Okay, thank you for letting me know. I appreciate it. Next one, Spongegar. <laughs> I'd say like this is probably much weaker compared to the other pieces, but like I would probably consider taking this one off, or maybe yeah. restarting it. I don't think this holds up as well. the The way that his loincloth doesn't feel integrated to the rest of his body, and the way that the the resolution on the materials uh, it just doesn't seem to match up quite right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like if you look at the little red dots on the cheek, you can really see the resolution. 
Dreamgayar is asking how he can get a portfolio review. Just join our Discord and then follow the rules that are on there. All right. Board Ape. I did not think we were going to see a Board Ape tier today. <laughs> Do you think there's going to be more? Let's find out. <laughs> Oh, but that is the timer for this one. So just to wrap up, I think this is the same situation as um, the SpongeBob. I think it would be better off out of the portfolio. It's just outdated, and sometimes that is the case. It's the same with here. So like sometimes that's the case with your portfolio, and you have to kind of be really realistic and see like which pieces are lifting you up and which pieces are dragging you down. You know. Um, and I would say that the last three are definitely kind of dragging you down, so don't be scared to take them off. You can keep the pieces, you can post them on Instagram, you know, Reddit, whatever. It's better to have less pieces than a piece that makes the person thinking about hiring you believe that you might not understand what makes good art. If, if they think that you thought that it was that good when you put it up, then they might not think that you're as good as you are. Yeah. The next person is Abdul Kang. Abdul, are you here? Abdul. Oh, yes, you're here. Nice, nice, nice. Graduate character artist at LKWD Publishing. Project Fear. Spent the past couple of weeks working on this um, as I'm a big Batman fan and the Batman was just too good. I really tried to give it the look from the Batman Arkham games where the suit progressively gets worn and torn as the game goes on. The model itself definitely looks good and clean. I wish that the background was not as dark because it does make it harder for me to appreciate it it just feels like the whole thing is a bit too dark and i want to see it more because it is good yeah normally as a rule of thumb i say no white and no black go for someone in between this model is a good example of the balance between like what you would texture in substance versus model in zbrush I, I get that question a lot, like, how, how far do I go in ZBrush, I think? Yeah, this is a good example. Yeah, but like, the, the Sketchfab viewer makes it a lot easier to see it, because you can mm -hmm. see the model itself has more color from the light on it, and the background isn't totally black. Yeah. I don't have much to discuss about this piece. It looks nice, good layering of the uh, fabric or leather in the throat area. Looks really good. Great Cun's Jacket. Created this to learn the, marv the marvelous ZBrush process better and to work on my texture. Inspired by Great Cun's from Fallout Vegas. Oop. There I go, selecting everything. Oh, the, the painting on the back looks really cool. Yeah, this is really good again. And I, I just have the same critique that the first two renders are a bit too dark. Let's see if there's... I'm disappointed. I want to scrutinize. But... Not bad. Fine. Bethesda logo. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're they're looking good so far. By the way, the fourth piece in my portfolio has nudity potentially. It's stylized shirtless male. I did put it as mature. Thank you. I think a shirtless male is okay. Um because of society. <laughs> 
Um, so we'll be okay. Thank you for letting me know, though. Uh, our ML Create and Spider Man Resident Evil's RPD, Raccoon Police Department. I created this over a weekend to teach game art students how to create an asset for video games. Um, that's the first time I'm okay with somebody saying like that they created it over the weekend or like how long it took. Because like, you know, it was to teach students. That's pretty cool that you put that on there. Yeah, it's looking good overall. I I don't like the second render being orthographic. This is the kind of thing where normally you would just have a second uh, perspective render of it. But the modeling itself looks nice and clean. And it looks like your UVs are square, which we'd love to see. There's some improvements that could have been made on the texture, like sometimes where Sorry, I'm getting attacked. There's some parts <laughs> where pieces are touching each other, where you would get grime build up in the corners that I'm not seeing. Because it looks like you have edge wear on the outside corners, but not when pieces are coming together. I suppose that is one great point that like the metal has a ton of edge wear, but the Wood does not have basically any edge wear if you really think about it. Yeah. Right? Also, I don't know, what do you think about the wood grain on these two pieces right here? Like in the front, those like right next to RPD. Um, yeah, it definitely looks like there's some spots that it isn't quite going in a direction that makes sense. So that's something you always want to keep an eye out for. Would you have, like, made those wood grains vertical instead or something Probably, like that? Yeah. yeah. But all in all, again, pretty solid work. For wood grains, you always want to consider how the object was made in real life, so it's more likely going to follow the longer end of the wood. Nice. Next, we have the Hell Walker, a forgotten warrior that wanders Hell. Character design and created further practice stylized sculpting through my master's degree. Yeah, I know uh, from last time that Spacey doesn't care whenever all of the different shots are totally different sizes. Do you? <laughs> but for some reason, I care a little bit. It, I, I care a little bit, but it's not like make or break it for me. The thing that bothers me more out of this set is that the very first image is wide plurapt and his head and feet are very close to the edges but he has a lot of room on the sides and so it feels to me like i would prefer it to be even more different than the other images just to get this one image looking better but that's my preference maybe like a pbr render BP bpr <laughs> Would have been helpful for that first one to again yeah but all in all modeling wise clean very clean like that that is one clean sword you know um for the, for the modeling i did feel like it's good it's definitely clean but it feels a little too soft like there's some parts that you could have just pinched those creases a little like in the folds of his pants since it is really stylized or his abs just read all the same softness and so just having a little contrast in the definition of those lines could help you mm -hmm. ironically there's a part that's super hard contrast that i don't know if it should be like the deltoids underneath the deltoids mm -hmm. going into the bicep like it's it's like a different mesh really, basically like two meshes um a couple of things about the character itself he his center of gravity feels strange and he's leaning back with his upper torso 
and the pants are maybe too mirrored. Um, see how they're perfectly symmetrical, right? Like cloth would never be that symmetrical. So definitely watch out for that. Not bad though. So we're, we're out of time for, for this person. Let's just give ourselves a sneak peek of the, the last character here. Oh my god, it's from RuneScape. I'm so glad we took the time to look at this. <laughs> RuneScape did not look like this in my time. Yeah, I like the difference in the hard and soft edges better on that sculpt. Mm -hmm. But it's not really shining through in the final material, though. The final right. material kind of like yeah. flattened all of it out. Maybe there's just not enough contrast. Like, you probably wanted to b bake a really solid AO map of um, of what you had baked, or what you had already built. I guess little kittens jumping around, they're so cute. Anyway, all in all, like, we were not able to find a lot of flaws here, right? Like, there were minor nitpicking things, normally presentation, um, but really good job, so... Yep, they're minor. They, they make at. me feel like, yeah, you know, maybe there was some flaws, but overall, I feel like this person knows what they're doing. I would, I would trust them with something. They would be able to learn from their small mistakes. Um, I, I, there's somebody that I knew used to call that like, there's no, there's nothing here that I can't art, not that I can't art direct. Makes yeah. sense. Like, no problem. You can just tell somebody that to, <laughs> to fix. As opposed to like deep, deep seated misunderstanding of what good art, quote unquote, looks like, or the entire pipeline, things like that. But yeah, next up is Gus. Gus, 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 Gus. Gus. Hey, he's probably here because uh, he works for me. But yes, he uh, better be. He better be missing out his own portfolio review. <laughs> Oh my god, he might not be here. <laughs> Hello, okay, he's here. <laughs> okay. Let's look at the latest and good race. Suck. Suck, yeah. <laughs> yeah this, this art sucks. Alright, we got that joke out of the way. <laughs> Suck is a creature from the tabletop RPG Ording Paranormal. He is described as a long, naked, wrinkles, and gelatinous creature that is capable to, to s s off suck sucking all of the air out of your lungs. Also, it is the first creature I sculpted. I'm glad with the result and looking forward to learn more. Any feedback is welcome. I greatly appreciate it. I feel like I need to think about the design for a second because, like, if it sucks the air out of your lungs, wouldn't it be better for it to suck the air out of the air, like, more efficient? Is it supposed to be game ready? It's been on Unreal Engine, I'm going to assume so. It's very wet. Okay. Oh, there's the concept! Cute! So... I, I, yeah. The first, the very first thing. Glossiness, right? This thing has its glossiness set to zero across the board. <laughs> Extra, extra glossy. Um, yeah. Maybe even like a little clear coat, you know, on top <laughs> or something. So you want to be more careful when you're setting up your glossiness. Like first, you want variation. You don't want the same exact value on the whole piece, right? You can actually highlight the wet-looking situation by, like, for example, making the areas between uh, the bumps maybe less shiny, so that you know it makes it look more interesting. Um, the air inside of the mouth is specifically the, mo the one that stands out the most because it's not very detailed and it's just super shiny, like, like plastic. Yeah, and you you would 
probably think that the inside of a mouth would be really wet, but then because there's no contrast between it and the rest of the piece, it just doesn't stand out in the way that it could. Um, the first render is kind of a no for me. It's really hard to see the model. The composition isn't quite right. Um, no rules of thirds were applied. Um, that red light. Was this Unreal Engine 5? I feel like if it's Unreal Engine 5, like you can do some more cool stuff. You know? <gasps> Kitten. Um, the shadows are too dark. I personally really dislike a black shadow, like a pure black shadow. What do you think about that? I agree with that. No pure black shadows. <laughs> You're going to want a skylight for that. Skylight will do a lot in Unreal. The modeling itself, like, as far as the concept goes, I think it's fine. It's just a little high poly for a game-ready model. Like, I don't I don't think we need that many loops going through the inside of the, of the mouth like that. They're not really adding anything. So what do you think about the UVs? Specifically the teeth UVs. I think that there's, first of all, no reason for the teeth to have their own shell because they are so small individually. It's likely that in a game-ready model you would only have maybe five teeth max and then you would just duplicate all of them around so that you could save a whole bunch of UV space there. Yeah, and then you would just put that alongside the other UV uh, shells or Udems, I suppose. I don't think a creature like this needs multiple Udems. Um, I would say that, in my personal opinion, opinion, um, multiple Udems are for something that's like important or close to the camera or in a movie. What do you think? I agree. Even, I mean, even if it is something that's not that important. We've we've used multiple for things that are very large, of course, or large things, is a good one. things that would otherwise be really, really hard to fit in a square shape and just need extra space. But this doesn't feel like one of those examples. I would bet that some people would actually put this on a UV set with another model, probably, like just to save space at some point. Then we have Fantasy X. This is my second project as a student and was my first time using ZBrush. The high poly modeling was made using the software. Then I learned Maya to be able to do a poly by poly. Oh my. Topology. And I finally ended up learning Unreal Engine. Okay, same stuff as before. Like, just keep it simple, right? Keep it simple. X done in Maya, ZBrush, Unreal Engine 5. Boom, right? Because you're the expert here. Oh, I like the little double point at the top of the axe. That's kind of cute. It's like a Pikachu head at the top. So, the very first thing I notice is how thick that axe, like the, the cutting part is. Like, that, that's more of a blunt object than a cutting object. I don't know if you agree. It's a little high poly. It's, it's hard for me to say, as I have made too many Fortnite axes. Uh, the, you know, there's a way to make it work if it's stylized, and it is chunky and then comes to a point, but this doesn't feel so much like that. There's definitely I think the proportions some, are important, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely some sculpting work to do because we are seeing a whole lot of lumps around here and we want to get those nice, clean, flat surfaces where they're desired and, and smooth corners and edges. And then with your low poly topology, especially on the back of the axe head, your edges aren't following the flow of the face and there's this sort oh, of yeah. curving around. Right here? Mm -hmm. nice and eye. overall the density of the polygons is not uniform 
throughout it. Like the handle has way more than the front of the axe. And he says in chat that his professor said it would be cool to explain the process. Like, I think it's fine to explain the process. Don't get me wrong. Just don't say stuff like, like, I was learning it. I, um, kind of like anything that devalues. So you can be like, uh, sculpted. This axe was sculpted in ZBrush. Then we topologize in Maya in your feed. Then lit in this place. Because that's still the process without all of the, like, more devaluing stuff. This one weirdly makes me inspired. Like I'm like, I wanna I wanna help this one, you know, it has potential. Uh and I mean the axe, not you, of course. Viking Shield, hello everyone. Okay, I'm just gonna skip the description, but same thing for everybody's description basically. I like that this one has like a little environment built into it. Like a the world's tiniest little environment. I like those little tick marks on it. I feel like there's a story behind it. Mm -hmm. this Ooh, one's... the constructed. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe not necessary, but I would I wouldn't have that myself. But interesting to see. Uh, we're definitely using a lot less polygons around the edge than we should be. Especially if there's so many on the inside that aren't contributing to the silhouette at all. The, the polygons around the very outside of the shield are the most important ones in this whole model, and we don't have enough of them. That is very, very true. Like, the amount of polygons down the side of the wood, as it goes in, like, the crevice, more than makes up, like, 40 times more polygons around the edge of the outside. Um, so one thing I'm noticing is that the shield is completely flat, so normally I think shields can be a little bit more curved, like inwards. I don't know if you agree, but that's maybe just a design I've, thing. I've been paid to make flat shields, so I'm yeah. not mad at it. <laughs> okay, next thing is the wood grain in the crevices. How it doesn't follow the rest. I don't know if you agree with that one. Yeah. Absolutely. And then the blood, I'm assuming that's blood, is a little too bright. It's like it's like brighter than it comes out of the vein as. Um and, yeah, and, and it, blood dries more of a dark brown. Mm-hmm. And it looks like the blood on the, like, the round part of the shield, like, the screw, I guess, is metallic, but the blood on the uh, outer edge of the shield is rough. That's interesting. And then you get some, like, edges of the shield coming out, actually, right here. Look at it, marm marmoset. Be careful with that. By the way, thanks everybody who's been following the stream this whole time. Uh, Spacey, make sure to post your link in chat, or I can. I'm gonna make sure we're always giving you a shout out. Whatever link of your choice. We've been using your art station. Yeah. Uh... But, uh, I hope that helps. Uh, we can all, since, since I know you very well, <laughs> we can always work more as far as like feedback and whatnot, and actually like actually creating action plans on on what to do next. Okay, but all in all, not bad. Simpler descriptions, and um, watch the, that roughness, those roughness values. Sure. So who is next? Miles, is Miles here? Oh, hello, Miles. Let's take a look at your stuff here. So there is one post marked mature, but I did look inside of it and I think it's fine, it is right? Not too bad there's some 
boobage at the bottom, but like not. It's like Barbie boob, not, not really. more so. Like it doesn't have anything actually bad. I think Twitch will let us on the slide. Next thing you know, channel's offline. <laughs> Studies dump. These are done to improve my understanding of anatomy and one contest. Uh, so we first we got Vamp. Let me just go ahead. Ooh, this is cool, whatever that is. Gone render? Damn. Pretty neat. And then demon. Okay, so very first thing, I think pure black background, pure black shadows don't really work. Don't really work for me. Yeah. It's fine to have the dark, moody scene, but it's just a bit too much if we're struggling to see the edges of the art. Mm -hmm. um, as an example, you know, a subtle rim light will help pop the model off of the background and can even set the mood even more so. Even though it's more light, it can be like a nice little red rim or something that just makes it even more mysterious, you know? Um... As far as anatomy, it, it's not bad. It, it just looks a little bulky, like everything gets pulled out horizontally too far. And this is actually a concept that I've been trying to figure out exactly how to word. But, you know, big shapes have gravity. So as you pull a big shape outwards, like per perpendicular from the bone, it's going to have a tendency to sag. Even if it's made of muscle, for example. We think of like muscle, it's like hard and it's not going to sag, but it still does still has gravity effect into it so a lot of these shapes should go down a little bit instead of just out and there's a very stark contrast between for example how wide and bulky the elbow is versus the wrist like you see how we have this like extreme kind of triangular tapering of the arm um all in all though i like it i think the the ears might might be too flat like i want to see more detail in here like one of the big big detail of the bat is the huge ears with like all sorts of stuff going on in the ears right i don't know if if you guys know what i'm talking about but like like bat huh? batman collectible statue <laughs> i'm putting together a uh, presentation for for my class that i'm teaching this week and i was trying to get everybody hyped about modeling and i was finding batman statues i'm like you can make these <laughs> you learn as you wish but look how cool these ears are there's like more bat uh, species with different ears that you can use I'm just bribing kids with um batman statues this is really cool like i'd be curious if like this was like rendered and then painted on or if you just did some really neat new stuff with ZBrush and VPR filters. Yeah, it's hard for us to tell what that one is, so it's yeah. we don't know what to judge you on for it. Yeah. I say the same thing, gravity, right? Like, breasts are some of the hardest things to sculpt ever, probably. And they are, like, if you can get them to fall naturally, you can do anything as far as, like gravity wise <laughs> um yeah. i definitely recommend trying it out and like actually giving it some some thoughts what i like to do is i like to sculpt like almost like a tear teardrop shaped shape and then just stick it on the there so it's like separate actually works pretty well and then you just kind of soften everything out then we have jaeger pilot fan arts Re-upload of improved version of this character by reducing the total poly count to 35,000 tries and better textures. I think the description is still not working here because when I read better textures, I expect really good textures. And yet when I look at that right after reading the description, I'm thinking there's some things that you could definitely improve here. This thing has like 
four. Oh, oh my gosh, it has like forty Udems. I think. Unless this is just like one big UV map. It's definitely not UV'd properly. Like some of these Udems have like strips of polygons on them that could just fit literally anywhere else. You know, so packing is a skill. You know, my, you know my father, he takes great pride in his ability to pack anything into a suitcase. He he like makes a big deal out of it too. He like micromanages people before they go on a trip. Uh and he packs like my grandma's suitcase, like my grandma who could totally pack her own suitcase. Um cuz he just likes doing it and he's like when I was a teenager, I had a job bagging things at the grocery store and I learned a lot <laughs> about packing. <laughs> Maybe my dad should uh, do give you lessons. Okay, so one of the big things about the texture map that I noticed is that this like undersuit of like hexagonal pattern has a ton of stretching and like some parts has really small hexagons and some parts have really big ones. And you don't want that. Right? You gotta get that evened out. Yeah, and if you were trying to make it look seamless, it would be a lot easier if you had unwrapped the UVs in such a way that you had as few seams in there as possible. So it wouldn't even be possible for you to have hexagons that don't line up like that. Yeah. And like, when you're doing clothes, like the beauty of clothes is that clothes have seams. That's just how clothes are, right? So just plan for your seams, like your UV seams to go where normal clothes seams would go. Right, around the um, shoulder, down the inside of the arm, you know, makes life easy, I think. You know, I might be able to see some seams in the front of the thigh. And, and in that way, you can also add more mm. to the seam to make it look even more deliberate. You could add fake stitching down the UV seam so that it looks like you really did that on purpose. We have some stretching of the armpit area. It feels like it's it's being pulled from right from the kind of like two inches down the actual armpit on the arm and just straight line to the chest, right? You gotta like tuck that in like up like an A shape, tuck in that armpit. Things three D artists say. Uh, <laughs> um, for the white part of the outfit, the thing I would comment on the texture is that it looks like you just applied. A single damage type material over the entire thing without regards to which part of this outfit might see more wear which you know the outer corners would get dinged on corners more often so you know it's less likely that parts inset would be so much worn down as the outside because they just wouldn't hit things as often so you have more smooth areas in contrast to the more damaged areas yeah. This is like a big white set of armor. Like, this. it's a great opportunity to do a little storytelling. Like, this is just like extraneous stuff. Like, like what did this person do before you did the surrender, right? Like, were they fighting a Jedi or something? Did they have like burn marks? That'd be cool, you know? Uh, last one Captain America's Shields. Texture study of Captain America's Broken Shield from Endgame. I actually like the textures on this. I just think that the actual broken part like doesn't have any sort of textural element to it at all to like indicate any sort of damage. Yeah, I agree. The texture the the material's working here. The outside broken part sort of looks too soft, like it wasn't actually broken in a fight. It was just like melted away. Or like cut off, you know, with like a precision machine. Um, let's see what the actual Broken Shield might have looked like in the movie. So this one here, like, you see in the reference view image, um, how it kind of has, like, just the pure metal around that edge, for example, to showcase that it's lost its coating. Uh, this one's really cool because it actually has more damage on it, right? And it has, like, full-on, like, scratches out of the broken area. So, I definitely would go for something like that. But all in all, not bad. Yeah, so, for, things, 
For things that are really damaged, it's a good uh, rule of thumb, I guess, to have, you know, a very few amount of really large detail, a medium amount of medium detail, and then you have your little details in between. So you just want to have some kind of focal point in your damage so that it doesn't just look like it's evenly damaged throughout because that's not realistic. Okay. I'm going to go refill my drink real fast. Let's call the next person up and then uh, Space, you can take over and give them some good life lessons or something. Right. <laughs> uh, next one is Clammy. Chris de Temple. Temple. This Lucy is the next has one. has pressed my tablet button, so I hope that it doesn't accidentally <laughs> do anything. She wants to make art. Okay. This is your segment. Hi, Chris. Oh, man, but she... Anna Carol's the avatar genius. How can I critique this as well as she would? Okay, well, first of all, I'm not an anatomy genius. I'll leave that to her. But for the renders, my first thought is I only see one and I would like to see more. So, you know, I, I'm not sure how far down this bus goes, and if this is, you know, just ahead, that's fine. I don't mind. But I assume that there's also a side to the head, a back to the head, that we could see more of that. The actual, uh, the colors feel a bit dark, as if I'd taken a photograph and the exposure level was too low. We're not really getting any strong highlights to give it contrast against the shadows. But as, as far as I know, the texture of the skin does look quite good. So I like the materials going on here. And, and nothing strikes me as particularly off with the anatomy. Uh, again, I don't know anatomy. And also, the Avatar people don't look human, so I'm going to trust you on that. If nothing jumps out to me as wrong, that it must be close enough. I'm back. What did I miss? Hello. I gave some critique on the Avatar fan art, but I use the <laughs> Avatar goddess. So what am I to say? Avatar. I like that stuff. <laughs> um... I think I've already critiqued this piece in the past because it was done for one of my um, it was. challenges. Yeah. So we can, since you've already done it and I've already done it, let's skip this one. Perfect. You but regardless, it's <laughs> Goblin character. This is a character I've been working on for a while now. No base mesh is used. Retopology, then a topogon to three with a mix of zero mesh. Evies and Rhizom. Rhizom? I am. Textured in Substance Painter and rendered inside of my residential by four. Simple, to the point. Nice. I'm thrown by how the first one had only one render and I wanted more, and now I'm seeing too many. They're, you know, they're not bad renders, but the third image is basically the same as the second one, but slightly worse because it's cropped the axe and it it has not enough exposure so i would just remove that one entirely to start so if i had to put my money on it i would say that this person has the same problem i have with rendering which is like i'll change the the post processing filters i'll change the lighting and Every single time, I feel like I'm making lateral progress, and I can't decide if it's better or worse than them. Like, I must show all of them, you yeah. know? <laughs> and then I just keep saving more versions of the thing until eventually, like, I just have to pick one. Um, yeah, you, so you you pick a couple. You have to be really you know? honest with yourself about, is this extra render going to add more to the viewer? Or is it basically the same that you could just switch it out with one of the other ones you already had, and it wouldn't really change much? because you don't want to have too many extra or I, you know, I, the random person viewing your profile 
don't really care as much about this art as you do, to be to be quite honest. And so if I'm seeing too many renders, I'm just going to get bored and scroll away. Um, that being said, like, if you really like the other renders, like, put them on Instagram, save them for Twitter, you know, like, things like that. Like, that's totally reasonable. One thing I noticed is that there's the number four on, like, every render. You see that little four in the corner? It's, it's the Marmoset tool bag four logo, but since it's black, only the red four shows up. <sighs> Um, all in all, not a bad character. Um, the only thing that sticks out to me is the nipples, if I'm going to be completely honest. And, like, I might... I know, it's weird, but, like, they're just really <laughs> high up and close out. together. <laughs> no, like, seriously, like... But then again, you know, I would say that there needs to be a room for genetic variation, so... I don't know. But, yeah, it just feels a little unnatural. But I really like this piece. I really like the weird, cool... Uh, skull shoulder pads. Yeah, the model itself is looking pretty good. Yeah. Only thing I like I don't like about the shoulder pads is that the chain just goes right into the shoulder pads, and um, there's like no sort of indication of how they attach. It's just overlapping. A little detail. Ooh, alien concept. Sculpted in ZBrush, made to learn rendering in Arnold and some of the Maya workflow. Ooh, this is um, quite something. Blown out, right? In my opinion. It's like a light colored alien lit really brightly against a very bright background. Just too much for me I, as far as... I kind as... of appreciate the vibe in a cinematic way. But it's the kind of thing that you might have one render like this and then the rest of the renders are more neutral so that you can appreciate the sculpt better. I really like the fold, like the nasolabial fold. It looks clean. clean. Yeah, the sculpting on this is really nice. Mm -hmm. I think it's just one thing that stands out is that all of the renders are backlit and so we, it's really lacking the ability to properly appreciate all the good work that you've put into it i think a little bit more roughness variation on the skin could have been really nice like the skin just looks really dry and like almost sandpapery um, Lion in chat says, your works are very great, just every model is mirror symmetrical, and it's a good point. But asymmetry goes a long way. Bone Axe Shield and Horned Helm. Black Shadows? No, no. At least on my computer screen. Yeah, it just feels like there's too much contrast in the lighting. Um, inconsistent polygon counts. And the axe on top of it all is triangulated, whereas nothing else is. You know, I, I personally don't like seeing triangulated topology. The brain can't really read that as well as just some quads, you know? Yeah, it definitely makes it difficult to understand if your original topology made sense, because it's just become so noisy. Um, the center sphere of the shield is way too high poly. I would perhaps spend that poly count on the helmet. Change it up. And, and the edge of the shield. And then the edge of the shield. All of those corners are feeling really soft just like the first piece we took a look at especially on the helmet right here because there's really soft and it comes to a point like this i think the helmet could have used some better texturing like the shield has some nice like edge wear and like bevels and stuff in the, in the... the helmet just looks really flat I almost feel like, I don't know if you, like, it's more of a feeling than anything, like, 
Whenever edges in hard surface models don't have any sort of beveling or like edge wear at all to them, it looks dry to me, like like literally dry. Yeah. I agree with you. If you yeah. love it, bevel it. <laughs> I don't know why dry, but like that's how it feels. Anyway. I wanted to make these for a character I have been working on. Eventually I'll get everything together in one scene with the character posed. Check. Newest project I've been messing around with. Rendered real time in Marmoset with fog added in to make it look like water. <laughs> I like the tricks. Shark body is a 1400 quads. Thief and eyes were added in later. One of the favorite things I ever worked on professionally, but not really professionally, was um, we were doing this um, interpersonal like survival training, and you were on an island after like your boat has crashed or something, and I put in a shark, and every time you would go up on top of a certain rock and look at a certain point, the shark would like do a you know, like breach the water. It was just so much fun to just do like a little bit of that. Okay, um... I didn't have anything bad to say about that. I enjoyed the shark. I don't know, the gills, maybe. So let me search up great <laughs> white shark. I don't know shark anatomy enough. I think you gotta brush up on that shark anatomy. So... Well, there's no really good shots of this. Okay, so the gills, as you have made them, almost look like like the grating on a hard surface model, like a grating on a helmet or a furnace. Um, they're perfectly rectangular, top to bottom, nice little rectangular strips. Whereas in real life, they are more so layered and organically shaped, a little bit curved. You know, they actually end right before the fin and curve out. Um, literally, the gills are the only things that change. They are too straight. They are too imperfect. I mean, perfect. When I say that, like, organic models, it's all about the imperfections. I really like sharks. I'd be okay with, like, being reincarnated as a shark. Probably. Like, one that lives a good life. I'm really not a big fan of the way the, the nose has been retopologized. Like, it, it's got, like, funky, abstract polygons with no loops. Um, just a non non-planar stuff right here when my mouse is circling. Yeah, whenever you have a big, multi-sided star like that, it's usually not a good idea. Oh, I love retopology, and all I want to do is pull up Photoshop and draw in how I would have done it, but we are already out of time. Where we can look at one more. This was done as a text for myself not to use any symmetry. Use the ZBrush oh, tool base. You're already taking advice. <laughs> Less symmetry. Time is a flat circle or something like that. Um, well, cool. It's a little bit undefined in areas, like the traps don't really have any definition, delts are not super defined. The elbow on, on the straight arm looks undefined, even though it's straight, like, no, even though it's straight, it should still have definition. Like, is this a portfolio piece compared to the others? I would say probably not. Myself. It's just lower in quality. 
Next one is Hugh Stewart. Hugh Stewart, are you here today? You, Stuart, speak now or forever hold your pieces. Well, let me try to get my chat back in properly. By the way, thank you everybody who submitted themselves to this portfolio critique. I know it can be a little bit scary to <laughs> get your work picked apart on the internet in front of people. So I commend commend you and commend you on your bravery. So he's not here. Eduardo Stopa Freitas. Oh. Oh lord, this must be the one that this, I was worried this about. This one has some properly mature content. Okay, so we'll be, be careful. Wary. Eduardo, just in case he's not Brazilian, Eduardo. Mm. He's here. Let's go. Okay, so first of all, it's pretty relatively pro prolific portfolio. It has quite a few pieces in it. Let's start with the latest. Quite a few really good pieces, too. Mm. The Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Hello, everyone. This is a personal project for 3D printing. I'm a huge fan of Tim Burton movies, and Sweeney Todd is one of them. The character is Sweeney Todd, interpreted by Johnny Depp in the role. The statue have a 110 scale. Print and paint job was done by A3 in Broker. Where's the prints? Ah, I see. Down oh, nice. Bottom. Oh, nice. Really cool. See, a lot of people in chat are like, give me the link, I want to see it. If you want to go see it, go join the Discord and then you can click on it. Every link that we've looked at so far is in the art challenges page. So, this is pretty neat, actually. Um, I don't feel like I have too much nitpick on this one. It's complete. It looks good, I can recognize it, even if you hadn't said anything, I would still know that it was Johnny Depp as Sweeney Todd. The, okay, I do have something to nitpick, this one. And this is a difficult concept to get across without like actually having a ZBrush open. But... I've grown to be able to tell, like, or at least suppose, I suppose, <laughs> um, when somebody doesn't rotate the camera enough when they're modeling. So the model looks really good from one or two angles, but not so good from the other angles. And on top of that, when you're dealing with the human face and you do that, you tend to get a very, a very iconic straight line from the three quarters out, area out of the face. It goes all the way down where it basically does a 90 degree uh, angle, like this. Almost as if it was like a like a cube's edge, like this. Um, and you can really see it when you rotate the character to the side like this, and you see that it's just not as strong as the front, and maybe like a little slightly three quarters. So I would definitely look into that. But all in all, really nice piece. I like all, I like the breakdown here. Um, yeah, really good. Next we have the Belgian Malin Malinois. Is that how you say this? Malinois? I don't know. Confused about that dog name. I can't help you. I'm American. <laughs> well, that's a very common dog breed in the United States. That they use instead of German Shepherds now for like police work. 
Um, just off the bat, I feel, and I don't have the reference, that the torso is a little long on this. It just feels like it keeps going for a little too long. Malinois. Okay, my first guess was okay. I'm a, a bit peeved that in the second image, the render on the right, the ears are cut off at the top. <laughs> it just, it feels unnecessary to have that happen. We would like to see the whole model like the other two. Because the model is really good. Probably just a little oversight, yeah. The, the paws look really strong. Like, normally people don't work so much on the paws, but these paws look pretty fleshed out. Um... The tail fur, not my favorite, looks a little blobby. Doesn't feel like it connects to the underside of the legs either. Like normally the fur continues, like he has no booty. I agree with you partially, but because it is for 3D printing, sometimes 3D printing hair does look kind of weird digitally mm -hmm. because it looks a lot better when it's printed. Okay. In that case, it's still too symmetrical, though. You can see the line down the center of the hair. But still, I think they, there's ways to do it that's not so blobby. Like, you could use... Um, you could, like, draw in the flow with the clay buildup or something, and then use, like, alphas of, like, just hair strands or something to just make them finish more nicely. Oh. Okay. Alien whip. I really like the black pupils. I think it's a strong model. It works really well. The details look the best on the albedo. Like you could probably push the the contrast of the details a little bit more on the face. Oh no, I really like this one. What do you think about this one? Yeah, I I really enjoy it. Nothing jumps mm -hmm. out at me here. Let's skip the um, other one. I'm gonna pick the Bulbasaur next because we're running out of time. I like that everything is like geared towards 3D printing, you know? That's a good thing. Nice like specific portfolio. Um for this one, the render, like the the feet are touching the platform, which is like perfectly tangenting tangential tangential with the bottom crop of the image. I feel like it could have been a little bit different. Yeah, I feel like the render doesn't show it off very well. It's not the most flattering angle for him, and it's cropped really closely to the top of his bulb. Just better compositions for your renders in general. Um, when in doubt, just go for the rules of thirds, like, and uh, leave a safe margin. Then this will show everybody a safe margin around the piece. Uh, basically, like, where you wouldn't have any scene that's, like, the main main event of the piece outside of that margin. Photoshop, I believe, has all of these like things built in, like so that you can just put a grid on top of your of your render to measure all the stuff out. Very cute still. Oh, skip, skip. Ah, oh, this one looks really cool. It's a really nice render too. The skull with ram horns. Yeah, and with that rim light around it, there's no danger of it being too dark because we can really see what's going on back there. Love that. And the rim light has such good contrast with the rest. Like, it's subtle, but it's cool, right? Like, it's a cool color against the, the warm colors. I really like it. It's been a good one. Um, this has been a good one to uh, critique. However, we are out of time, so we can't look at all of the things. But I still appreciate it. Let's take a quick little break. Let's call the next person. Wait. So the next one is Yusuf. 
Yusuf. With the creepy models. Um, let's take a quick little pause. So um, if you're enjoying the stream and you haven't yet, make sure to follow the channel. Spacey also has her own channel. So I'm going to give her a shout out in the, in the chat. Okay. Um, so make sure to follow those. If you're enjoying this awesome community of artists and you want to participate more, make sure to join the Discord server because the Discord server has literally almost 2,000 people in it. I, I don't know, like, I didn't even realize that until recently. Almost 2,000 people in it. 3D artists of all walks of life, and what makes us similar is that everybody's really nice, supportive, polite. Nobody will bully you there. <laughs> Which is, like, apparently something that happens on other servers, so I didn't know. Um, you can share your work, show it off, get feedback on it, give people feedback on their work. Um, you can participate in our challenges. We've been doing a challenge every week. Um, which, with giveaways, so make sure to join the Discord. Uh, lastly, um, I have a Grimroad that has one-on-one -on -one mentorships with me. They're sold out, as usual, right? Um, I'm kidding, kitty cat. Um, they're sold out right now, but you can join the waitlist. And um, you can join the workshop, which is not sold out. And you can also now purchase um, the workshops without being there live. So just kind of the recordings, okay? Uh, last but not least, um, Stacey, so you want to put your art station link so that they can go follow you? I can do my best with one hand. Okay, I'll do it. I got this. I got this. I have it open. And thank you everybody who has followed Recently, I haven't been thanking you live as you follow because we're busy in conversation, but I appreciate it. So is Yusuf here? No. Yeah, he said he's here. Oh, he is? He's here. Oh, okay. I, saw it. I swear. <laughs> it, uh, lat Latiny. Yes, that's the right one. The right person. Okie dokie. Let's begin. This one should be a little faster since less pieces. So let's begin with the latest. I present you to Mr. Zombie Grandpa. I managed to make him hyper realistic character. I have done a manual quad with Tapo and Maya. I have worked with Udem's workflow. I have designed this character doing sculpting. Okay. Mr. Zombie Grandpa. Lucy closed. The portfolio. Hang on, I have to find it again. <laughs> and you're typing too in chat, which is funny. One of the cat has something to say. Okay, I'm back. This is an example of how, like, a good rim light can save you from the ill effects of a pitch black background. Yeah, I still don't like the pitch black background, but it's not harming the art in the same way. We're still able to see it. Mm -hmm. He does have a lot of geometry, which may be more than is necessary. I'd say that like the edge loops aren't quite right. Like. It's, this has been her top load in a way to conserve the shapes, and that's fine. But, like, for example, in the back of the armpit, we got some, like, strange shapes. Kind of, like, diamond shapes instead of loops. Right here, for example, which could be kind of annoying for animation. We also got uneven distribution of quads. So you get this one th really thick strip of um, tight, tightly woven edges right at the, along the back of the leg. Which is not necessary. There's something about it that, like, I can't put my finger on it. I think it's the mouth. Like, the teeth are too wide. The mouth, I can see the topology in it. It's like... Um... Faceted. 
mouth is too singular in its color. Like the red inside of the eyes looks way better than the red inside of the mouth. The glossiness is too extreme again. The teeth don't really look like they belong there. They're just kind of like thrown around inside of the mouth as opposed to like actually fitting into the gums. The model itself, I think, is pretty cool. Uh, I think it's suffering from symmetry because this is the kind of creature that you expect. He's really messed up. He's been through some stuff. He's probably not got, you know, the same injuries on one side of his body. He looks like he might walk with a limp, and maybe that's because his legs are different sizes. So that's something to think about in the future. Okay. Not bad, though. <laughs> the next one is Nightmare Fuel. <laughs> Good thing I have my stream set to 18 plus. <laughs> Bat Daddy Spider. <laughs> this it is certainly it's makes you feel some kind of way. Right? Isn't it, at the end of the day, the point of art is to invoke emotion in the viewer? <laughs> my first emotion is that it, its fingertips are not touching the ground, and I really want them to. Fat Daddy Spider is a creepy creature who moves like a spider and human at the same time. I designed this creature during the sculpting process to have some of the spider anatomy and human anatomy. I used ZBrush to sculpt him, and then I used ZBrush for topology. I used Substance 3 Painter for texturing, and I did some normal map, rendered it in Marmoset Tool Bed 4. Nice, um, subsurface scattering. I appreciate the way that the skin folds are sagging. It kind of feels like a spider has put on a human suit, and I hate that in a good way. <laughs> I think the materials is leaving something to be desired. It feels a bit too consistent in the roughness or glossiness. I'm not I'm not feeling like this area around the mouth where all the blood is dripping out is that much different than the rest of the body. So it'd be good to see some more contrast. So, um, the seam on the face might be one of the biggest flaws of this piece. Like, when you're... This is why we don't... I don't know. This is why you should consider not auto uv something that goes in your portfolio. Um, because auto UV might end up cutting the nose out of your piece, cutting a seam right down the nose, above the nose, right down the eyes, the mouth, around the eyes, down the side, then back around, down the chest, right? You want one cl clean seam down the back of the head. Um, I don't know, I feel like for this one you might be okay with putting a seam underneath. Be careful with scenes. Definitely basically. a good lesson that even if someone has designed a computer program to automate something and you think it's really convenient, you should still go in and check the computer's work because a lot of times it's not really as smart as it pretends to be <laughs> and you can find something to fix up there. Yeah. Um, yeah, all the details, they feel really repetitive. Um, Saying size... Like Stacey was saying, I feel like some of these folds could be tighter on themselves. Like e every fold has like the same amount of folds sticking out versus fold going in versus sticking out versus coming in. They don't bunch anywhere, you know? Okay. All in all, not bad. Very creepy. Very creepy work. Thank you for keeping us on our toes and fingers. <laughs> um, is that a song sticking out my that hits my emotions? <laughs> okay, next one is Cri Cristino Lopez. Chris Cristino. Yeah, are you here, Cristino? So, oh my god. 
a little baby. One of the stories of my college years was that from one of my thesis projects, I had to make a game and we chose Isla, yeah, Isla de las Munecas or something like that. And like an island full of very creepy dolls. Okay. And we spent ages making super freaking creepy dolls. Comes the day to present the thesis to the professors who are going to judge us. We all notice there's something wrong. This doesn't look the same way that we thought it was going to look. Turns out the level designer who was in charge of the, l the last little finishing touches accidentally deleted all of the dolls off the map. <laughs> and instead of just a creepy forest with no dolls. <laughs> How did that not get caught? We, I we, we didn't check it that morning. You know, like, it was, like, the day before, so basically, everything was fine in school, we all went home, we all came back the next morning to do the pitch, or, like, to, like, showcase the final thesis, and it was just gone. Whoops. <laughs> and Always check your work. I hate that one of the feedback of the teachers was like, man, I thought that with the name, you would have, like, had dolls around, and we were like... That, that would have been <laughs> such a good idea. I can't believe we didn't come up with that, oh my god. Okay, so he's here. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Starting with... Let me put on the timer. Humpback alien. Sorry. <laughs> so a personal project that I've been making, it all started with a simple sketch that was not going to get anywhere. In the end, it ended up with this. <laughs> Okay, as usual, improve, make your descriptions more professional, good punctuation, don't maybe go into your fault flaws. It's pretty cool. I really like the little bracelet detail. Really appreciate the asymmetry. The color scheme is nice. Something about the materials combined with the lighting is throwing me off and is bringing down the model. Especially the lighting is just blowing out some areas for one thing. Exactly what I was thinking. By the way, people, when I'm squinting at a piece, I'm not judging it. I'm just trying to literally like find the focal point and which is like the problem. It's all evenly lit. Every material is calling my attention the same amount be it because they're the same value or they have detail or something or high contrast. My eye doesn't know where to go. The lizard, like it's, you see how it doesn't stick out from anything? Like you could look at this and not see the lizard, in my opinion. Um, so I think it's the lighting rendering that's really the problem here. I just feel like it's getting bombarded with light, white light from every angle. Like when I squint, the focal points are this finger, the side of the chin and the cloth on this left side, you know, which is exactly not where you should the, the chin think. is getting a lot of light in all angles, mm -hmm. and I don't think that's the point of the image. I would like it's not a bad image. I would seriously consider re-rendering it with a simple three-point light scheme. Yeah, I think the model itself is worth a better render. Mm -hmm. Rendering is hard too, like. We spent so much time getting the perfect model, and then at the end we're like, oh God, I have to do this, and then next thing you know, you ruin it. And you don't elevate it, you bring it down. Um, all in all, though, uh, also the glossiness situation is definitely something we could address, because it looks really rough all around to me. Except for the meat, maybe. And a few things. Skin needs that variation in order to really look alive. The hand just looks really dry. Well, no, not bad. Oh my goodness! Look at this one. Oh baby. That oh. Adorable. The one in the water is literally like amazing. It works pretty well. Yeah, I think the the lighting and rendering is is letting it down again cuz I mean this model is so precious. We we can all see that, but we're getting some blown out lighting and the 
the grass around the edges is way oversaturated and taking up our concentration. Well, we really want to be focused on the hip bow in the middle. The the whole composition, it's heavy. It's like the camera is slightly fo to the right of where I want it to be. Because the focal point should be the hippo's face and the butterfly. But we're getting a ton of grass to the right, you know what I mean? And less grass to the left, which is where the focal point is. It's like reverse than what you'd expect. You want to move the render a little bit. The light, the shadows are too dark here, which is part of the problem that's giving us too much contrast outside of the hippo. Um, you're not going to see almost black shadows on a sunny day, right? Like you're going to see a little bit of that like bounce light. So be real careful. This one's neat. Aquatic alien creature. Creature that lurks in the deepest waters of the planet. I think the first render on this works better than the other ones because you haven't tried to do too much. And so you haven't found yourself out of your league with the render on this one. Like, the, the final turntable of the hippo looked good because the lighting itself was working, and it didn't have any of the rest of the scene to distract us. Okay. Let me just raise your volume, somebody's complaining. Um... Okay. So, totally agree. I wish that this... That this, this is a great model, a great render. I just wish maybe the background wasn't white. Um, but all in all, looks good. Okay, so like, I don't know about you guys, but when I see a deep sea render, there's a couple of things. So first thing is like, where does light come from if it's in a pure black environment, right? So it's got to come from a flashlight or from something that is brought down there by mankind. So one thing that would be really cool to do is to change the angle of the light. So that it's going straight from the camera or like right underneath it, kind of like almost like it's flash right on the character um, to kind of add even more of like that environmental like tenseness of like we are down there in the water. We're holding a flashlight and that's what's illuminating this character as opposed to like some random like top down light coming from God knows where. Right. I agree. Oh, I know this one. Oh, it's got my name on it. <laughs> I've briefly critiqued this one, but I'm okay with critiquing it again because I think I was just said something about the teeth or something last time. But I'll let you go first. Okay, I'll like well, I'll say the same thing again about the lighting. It's definitely blowing out the colors. We don't want to see all this white taking away from the actual textures. Yeah, blown out. Top of the horns, especially, especially this horn and the back side. And the side of the neck, especially at the, the mm -hmm. bottom image. Yeah. Oh yeah, on the right, hadn't even noticed. So, uh, teaching moment. When we say blown out, we mean like, an area has become so saturated with light that it becomes flat. You cannot see any detail or like sculptural anything in that area. So you see how it flattens this out? I can't see any scales where my, my mouse is pointing. Right there. Because it's been blown out. Exact opposite of what you want to do. When you are lighting a model, you want it to look more 3D, not less 3D, unless like that's the style you're going for, you know? So things that make the model look more 3D is like nice, gentle lighting, a rim light that separates it from the background, like, you know, things like that. Glossiness. <laughs> Look at that baby. I can't get them both to stop eating stuff on my desk at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> at least take turns, cat. Go on. Oh, this is cool. Beauty is inside. <laughs> Look at how good this render looks comparatively. Like it's got that nice, the the world's most gentle rim light of all time. Just like one pixel Ooh, wide. Yes. <laughs> I like that. Um, look at all 
so like it's slightly blown out right here but it kind of works it's like a point of highlight and it's near the focal point which is like the face right faces and eyes um the Everything textures look moderation. good yeah okay. specifically this black and white one don't like the gradient background yeah the gradient background feels too much default zbrush it's too close and we don't like that yep i don't know why it's so why why it's like that i know as far as like the, the background for zbrush at least i wish they would change one of the grays to like not back black gray Maybe alien sculpts. Okay, so this is a classic example of, in my opinion, a piece that no longer belongs on your portfolio. It's just a lot weaker than the rest. Well, I might have hurt, judged it too harshly, actually. I thought that this was like a big seam on the neck. <laughs> I thought this was a, like a texture seam or something, but now looking at the extra renders, it looks like it's a appendage. <laughs> It is hard for my brain to parse what's going on with the face and the the six pack nose and the horn or I'm not sure what the purpose of these parts is so it's hard to judge any of the realisticness of the anatomy It's not bad. I I really go back on what I said like it's not bad isn't it the best in your portfolio no I think you need more fine detailing that isn't just repetitive. Okay. I think we're out of time um, for this person, but also we're out of time for the whole portfolio critique. Um, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so we have, let's see how many people we have waiting. Oof. Oh no, I'm just keep scrolling upwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine people waiting. Um, so we, unfortunately we don't have time to finish. Um, so that you guys know, somebody had just asked in chat if we do these portfolio critiques often. Not really. We only do these portfolio critiques once we hit a some sort of goal on my channel. So the goal this time was to hit 8,500 followers. So we'll update that to be 9,000. So when we hit 9,000 followers, we will do another portfolio critique. Um, just so you guys know in the future, like it is really hard for us to get to everybody because we want to like give really nice thorough critiques and not turn this into like a crazy mad dash of just like half-baked feedback, you know? Um, so I, I'm really sorry about that. In the future, um, <laughs> not to plug the channel or anything, but just so you know that subscribers, boosters of the Discord server, and Patreon supporters get priority on the on the uh, portfolio days. Okay, so if you really want to get get your portfolio for sure looked at, either get there early to put to put in your work early because it's first come first come first serve, or subscribe and boost and or boost the channel. With all of that being said, time to plug. <laughs> Perfect timing. You see how somebody just asked for your channel uh, URL and uh, fucking posted it there? So there's Spacey's Twitch channel right there. You want, guys definitely want to go watch her whenever she's streaming. You haven't been streaming a lot lately, but have you? I streamed earlier today. With oh my god, really? And wildlife photography. That's. I wish I had known. <laughs> um. So follow her on Twitch. Let me give just an extra shout out, just like really send it home, you know? Follow her on Twitch. Um, she does amazing stuff and has a lot of kittens and like, what else is... Can you see that paw? Like, today Sparkles is bringing out the paw action here. <laughs> <laughs> um, furthermore, she has an amazing art station and you should go follow it. Let me straight up put your art station up here. So, 3D hard surface artist at art bully slash cat enthusiast. <laughs> uh, so it's there is her link. You know. It's important, yeah. You only want to work with fellow cat enthusiasts. Um, she's done some ridiculously cool works before and continues to. So definitely go follow. Go follow right now. I have to. Um, 
Is there any other links you want to post, Space? Uh, that's that's the main stuff. If I mean, if you go to www.eliseeverett.com, you can see literally everything else. But that's that's where I put all the stuff. You know, if you render something 16 times and still want to post it, that's where I put my 240 photos of the same bird. Because it's my <laughs> website and no one can tell me not to. That's right. You gotta live life. Um, so, uh, on, on top of that, if you're enjoying the stream, make sure to follow this channel because I stream here every Sunday at 7 p.m. I all uh, Eastern. I also stream on the ZBrush Live channel at 5 p.m. Eastern every Sunday. So I stream there and now here. Normally we try to get these quick little models done uh, every stream so that we can put them on TikTok because I have perfect priorities. Like my priorities are right, right there. Um, and make sure to join the Discord. The Discord server is where all of our challenge. Oh, I spelled it wrong, but it works. The Discord server is where all of our challenges take place. If you ever want to participate in a challenge, an art challenge, you want to participate in a giveaway, you want to show off your work, get get people talking about your work, you want to give people feedback on their work and receive feedback on your own work, you want to um, share tips, tricks, tutorials, and other resources, and just make friends in the industry because we have a lot of good folks on there. Just nice people, supportive folks. I've I've cultivated this community by hand in four years in the making. Okay, so make sure that you join the Discord. Uh, I have social media, so if you want to keep up to date with my artwork, schedule, announcements, free content, social media is the place to go. Um, and last but not least, um, you can... I, I All of a sudden, Gumroad thingy isn't working, but it's okay. Um, okay, I have a Gumroad. <laughs> where you can join and you can um, get a, a 3D mentorship with me. You can get uh, participate in the workshop that I do every Wednesday on how to become a better 3D sculptor. And brand new thing that we just launched today, actually, because my uh, assistant um, had this idea. Basically, you can if you're not sure about the workshop, you can come in here and get kind of the a database only version of the workshop which is basically the same thing except without the live sessions and without feedback on your work but you still get access to all of the pre-recorded sessions i've been doing the workshop every week since march you get all of the base meshes that i made all of the brushes i gave all of the tools i created all of my anatomy resources pdfs things like that it's like uh alphas uh, even the articles I write. I write articles. Did you know that? I just get bored sometimes and I'm like, today would be a great time to talk about freelancing and ethics, you know, <laughs> and how to price yourself and how to have discipline. I don't know why I do that, but it's fun. I like it. So now you can find that on here. And of course, there's the full workshop too, in case you want to participate in person and get feedback on your work as you go. That's, that's it for me. Alrighty, everybody. I hope you had a absolutely wonderful, glorious day. Thank you so much for joining us. You are uh, truly the highlight of my Sunday. <laughs> Thank you so much, Elise. Or as I always call you, Spacey. Like I can't help it. I don't know if it, it bothers you, but like, no, it works. I, <laughs> okay, good. Because like we hung out at GDC like one time, partied a little hard. It was fun. And I was just like, Spacey, Spacey, Spacey. And it's weird to call somebody by their username, but like, <laughs> um, so, uh, thank you so much for spending some time here with us. I yeah, hope. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Good job, everyone. Good job. Good job, everybody. And I'm really sorry to the people we didn't get to today, but, uh, hopefully like it's still a learning opportunity to learn from other people's mistakes. <laughs> All right, everybody. See you next week. All right. Oh, oh, and before I go, one last thing. Tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, I am doing the Demystifying series with Maxon. Week three, now this time we are doing the lighting of this Kraken right here. I no longer have the link for that, so give me one sec. I, I do, actually. It's right here. Come join us right here, okay? You have to sign up because it's a webinar, but it's free.